Well, Deadpool and Wolverine is finally here, and man, was that worth the wait. Um, now, I've seen a lot of reviews say that it's just a bunch of fan service, and I mean, yeah, why else do you go to see a superhero movie? Um, that being said, though, the fan service in this film is absolutely worth every second. Ryan Reynolds absolutely brings it, like he always does, and the inclusion of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine in this movie is just absolutely the cherry on top. There's a lot of surprises, laughs, and what I like to call fuck yeah moments uh, to find in the movie. So if you're a fan of Deadpool, definitely go and see it. And if you, like me, are tired of Marvel and the pit of mediocrity that they've sunk into as of late, go see it anyway. This movie is an absolute lifeline to the MCU fandom and a very welcome breath of fresh air. Two thumbs up from yours truly. Uh, I do have a more in-depth review to follow, so if you don't want to be spoiled, consider this your warning. Alright, if you sat through one of my reviews before, you know how these usually go, where I discuss five good things and five bad things about the movie. Now these are just my opinions on the film and not meant to sway your opinion of it one way or another. I'm just some random guy from Iowa, what do I know? So let's start with what made this movie so great. First off, the Marvel team up we've always wanted. Um, being a fan of comics for many years, the one thing I've always loved is those random team ups that you'd either never expect or that you love seeing every single time they occur. One of my favorite team ups in Marvel history has always been Deadpool and Wolverine. So I've always looked forward to seeing them together on the big screen and no X-Men Origins Wolverine doesn't count. Well, this movie did not disappoint in that department. Wade and Logan made the perfect odd couple pairing that we've come to love from buddy cop films and stuff like that. Of course, it doesn't always go according to plan, so seeing them fight it out is just as much fun as seeing them work together. I'm so glad it, that if we were ever going to get this pairing, that Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman were the ones to deliver it. Speaking of team-ups we'd never expect, number two, fan service. Man, did we get fan service in spades with this movie, and I'm absolutely all for it. I always love it when watching a movie feels like someone just dumping out their toy box, and that's exactly what we got here. There's a pretty big swerve early on in the movie where we see Chris Evans in the void, which is basically the TVA's landfill for anyone or anything that gets pruned. If you don't know what I'm talking about, see Loki Season 1. Um... And he's playing what seems to be a wise mentor and kind of resident of the Void, here to guide Wade and Logan to safety after they get unceremoniously just dumped in there. Uh, Wade is ecstatic because, of course, he's a big fan of Cap. He considers him a hero. And as the bad guys roll in Mad Max style, he triumphantly shouts, Flame on! Yeah, it's Johnny Storm. And as soon as I saw that, I shouted, Yes! The Fox connection only grows from there as several X-Men villains such as Juggernaut, Azazel, Pyro, and Lady Deathstrike make appearances, along with one I've been looking forward to forever since the trailer dropped, Sabretooth, played by none other than Tyler Mayne. Of course, our heroes can't very well be expected to fight this battle alone, so they get joined by a few more mainstays from the Fox Marvel era, Jennifer Garner's Elektra, Wesley Snipes' Blade, Daphne Keene's X-23, and the biggest surprise of all, Channing Tatum playing Gambit. I'm pretty sure at this point, people sitting near me in the theater thought I was nuts, because as soon as I saw Tatum in a comic-accurate Gambit outfit, I immediately exclaimed, holy fucking shit. Only like the fifth, you know, time I'd done this at this point, but, you know, no big deal. Uh, we've seen John Favreau as Happy Hogan in this movie, when, uh, you know, Wade goes to try and apply to be in the Avengers. And fun fact, John Favreau is actually a Fox Marvel mainstay as well from the Daredevil films, so that was actually a pretty cool addition. Number three, this movie is a love letter to the previous Marvel Fox era. Now here's where my fan theories about this movie just got blown to hell. I had this thought in my head that this would be like Deadpool kills the Fox universe. Um, if you've never seen the comic, you know, Deadpool kills the Marvel universe, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, which also would have been kind of cool, but instead this film acts as a love letter to the Fox Marvel movies. Before the MCU came along, all we really had were the Fox films like 
the X-Men franchises, Blade, Fantastic Four, etc. And while some may not look back on them as fondly now that we have the MCU, they were great for their own reasons. I mean, it was really all we had at the time. Um, not only do we get cameos from some of our favorites from those previous movies, but we also get to finally see some of those heroes and villains all in one film. It's almost like a B-list Avengers movie in a way, and it's totally awesome. Deadpool really is the last man standing from the Fox era of Marvel, so it seems only fitting that this film kind of acts as a way to give those movies the send-off that they deserve. I'll admit the mid-credits scene showing the behind-the-scenes look at those past movies was a very cool way to tie a bow on the Fox universe. Number four, we got lots of Wolverine variants in this film. I mean, you think TVA, of course you're going to think variants. I mean, that's, that's kind of what they do, right? That's their whole thing. Um, Wolverine being in this movie was great, and most of all, it was because we finally get to see Logan in his classic yellow and blue outfit. Fox films, especially the X-Men films, did this really annoying thing of teasing us with comic-accurate suits only to revert back to some generic uniform in the next film. We get way more than we bargained for with Wolverine and get to see so many classic variants of everyone's favorite mutant. Um, so here's just a few that I picked out. Uh, the yellow and blue suit. So let's start off with the obvious one, which, you know, a lot of us who grew up w with the Jim Lee comics and the X-Men animated series immediately recognized from the first trailer that we got. Uh, from the first time I saw the new suit for this film, I immediately was hoping that Wolverine would wear the mask and so you can imagine my surprise when he actually puts it on towards the end of the movie and my god was it awesome i had yet another outburst and further cemented myself as a crazy person so i'm glad we finally got to see it and it looked glorious i mean it looked perfect on hugh jackman really um we also get the short wolverine so in the comics, Logan is 5'3", which is almost a foot shorter than what Hugh Jackman actually is. He's about 6'2". So seeing that was kind of a funny little tongue-in-cheek thing. Uh, we also get to see Patch, the, uh, you know, the kind of casino-looking Wolverine with the eye patch. Um, Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, which I thought was great. Uh, the brown suit, which is my personal favorite and is from Incredible Hulk number 340. We even get that kind of... If, you, if you've seen the, the cover art of Incredible Hulk 340, you see, like, Hulk kind of reflected in Wolverine's claws, and we kind of get that in the movie as well. Uh, Mark Ruffalo doesn't really make an appearance. It's just kind of quick and blink and you miss it kind of thing, but it's still pretty cool. And one of my favorites that I did not see coming at all was Henry Cavill. Uh, the Cavalrine, as Deadpool calls him. My God, was that cool. He even did the, like... You know, the fist cocking thing he did from Mission Impossible. He did that when he popped his claws out, and I was just like, oh, fuck yeah. I want a movie with Henry Cavill. I'm, ju I'm just saying, I want Henry, Henry Cavill to play Wolverine. Even though he's, like, gigantic, it would still be pretty fucking cool. Anyway, moving on to our fifth point on the good side of things. There's lots of in-jokes from Deadpool. And one of the best things about the Deadpool movies really is... Uh, you know, him breaking the fourth wall and kind of making little comments. And there's way too much to mention here, but I'll give you a few of my favorites. Um, where, where he, like, grabs the camera in the TVA and is like, Suck it, Fox! I'm going to Disneyland! And, like, headbutts it. I was, oh my god, I was rolling when I saw that. That was so freaking cool. Um, he kind of also touches on his beef with, Web with Wesley Snipes. Um... If you don't know from the production of uh, Blade Trinity, really Wesley Snipes was kind of hard to get along with. Um, you know, whatever. It, it's fine. It looks like they buried the hatchet. There's like pictures of him out there like hugging and shaking hands and stuff. So really it looks like they, you know, kind of buried the hatchet, which is good. But they still kind of mention it in there when Blade's like, I don't like you. And he's like, yeah, you never did. I'm like, it's another one of those, like, kind of aha moments, you know, if, if you know, you know. The way I kind of feel about Deadpool in this movie is he's kind of like a stand-in for the fans. Um, you know, he, he makes references to being done with the multiverse and it being just kind of a stupid thing. It's like, can we just put that behind us? Uh, which I, of course, loved. And then um, he also makes reference to, you know, 
Wolverine finally being in his suit. It's like, oh, finally, like we finally got what we wanted. And I totally agree. We finally did get what we wanted. Hell yeah. Um, Anyway, moving on to the bad. And really, when it comes to the bad in a lot of these movies, it's it's really just like nitpicks. Number one, the fight with Sabretooth. I've been looking forward to this forever. Um, Now, we did get a fight between Wolverine and Liev Schreiber's uh, Sabretooth, if you want to call him that, in X-Men Origins. But I've always wanted to see just like a knockdown, drag out fight between these two that got like absolutely bloody and just, you know, if if you know, you know, right? Like from the comics, like these two have a bloody history and I really wanted to see that play out. But unfortunately, it just kind of like they run at each other. He cuts off Sabretooth's head and that's it. So, you know, great way to waste Tyler Maine, guys. I don't know. It's a, nit- it's a nitpick. I mean, there's better fights in the movie, obviously, but whatever number two um as much as i loved seeing channing tatum play gambit i mean he had the you know his accents kind of played up for laughs a little bit but really when you got down to it and all the cool stuff gambit was doing in the movie i mean it really could have been played by anybody else that's kind of my only nitpick with that is that you literally could have put anybody else in the suit like a stunt actor not shown his face and just had him flipping around throwing cards and blowing people up and it really wouldn't have made much of a difference but I am glad, don't get me wrong I am very glad that Channing Tatum finally got to play Gambit to me it's kind of like Billy D. Williams finally getting to play Two-Face in the Lego Batman movie just for an example but anyway I'm, I'm rambling, sorry number three Nice Pool and the Deadpool core um Nice pool is kind of a tool. I, you know, sorry for the uh, unintentional rhyme there, but I, I didn't really care too much for nice pool. It was just kind of there, and it's just like, all right, can we can we move on from this now? That's that's fine. The Deadpool core, it's cool. You know, it's another one of those little Easter egg things. They've got one in the Wrexham outfit. You know, if you don't know, Ryan Reynolds has a a football, like a European football team that he sponsors or whatever. So that's kind of cool, I guess. But um, kind of some fun facts with that, though, that I did enjoy was that, and she never shows her face, but Blake Lively, his real-life wife, plays Lady Pool, which was cool. And then um, his kids actually played Kid Pool and Baby Pool. So that's, you know, that's another little fun fact for you there. Um, number four, the TVA. Now... I was, I know it was like kind of early in production when they said this, but they had said at one point that Owen Wilson and Miss Minutes were going to be in it. I don't really give two craps about Miss Minutes. She's annoying. But I really would have loved to see, you know, Mobius, uh, Owen Wilson's character, kind of make an appearance at the end and be like, you know, hey, what are you doing? You're screwing everything up. But, you know, we kind of got another one of the TVA mainstays that kind of took his place. So that's, you know, that's fine. It probably, I mean, I'm sure with the cameos and everything like that, the budget was probably skyrocketing at this point. So getting Owen Wilson would have been, you know, probably kind of a minimal priority at this point. Number five, the climax could have resolved a lot of things, but it just kind of didn't. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the ending of this movie. I'm glad they did what they did where they finally kind of like, gave Logan his happy ending that he deserved. And that was cool and all, but, you know, I'm kind of like, when they got to the whole sacrifice scene at the end, I'm like, oh, this is a good way to write Hugh Jackman's Wolverine out of, you know, Marvel continuity for the foreseeable future. Or this would be a way to, like, destroy Deadpool's universe and bring him into the Marvel universe. You know, the 616 universe as it is. But it it just kind of, like, you know, they have this whole fight of, like, who's going to be the hero and make the sacrifice? And then they both do, and you think they're both dead, and they're not. And then it's just kind of like, what do we go through this whole fucking thing for then? I mean, don't get me wrong. Love the movie. Just a nitpick on my part. Just an opinion. You don't have to agree with it. But it is what it is. Anyway, so. Final synopsis from Billy here. The, the guy from Iowa whose opinion doesn't matter. 
I would gladly give this a five out of five stars. And I know that's shocking because every movie I review on here gets five out of five stars just about, but I would give it five out of five stars because I left the theater feeling very satisfied and very glad that we got this. So, you know, I'm happy giving it a five out of five star rating. Um, Again, the things that I found wrong with it were just nitpicks, but overall, my God, I had fun with this movie. And I very much encourage you to go see it in the theater just because people going to see it in the theaters are all going to be fans just like you, and it's going to be a great experience. The only thing I have to say is that, and I ran into this when uh, the first Deadpool came out, you know, rated hard R, very hard R, right? And I worked at a movie theater at the time, and people were bringing their kids to it because, hey, it's a superhero movie. Whatever, right? Don't take your kids to this damn movie. Like, really? Uh, anyway, another nitpick. Whatever. Five out of five stars. Go see it. It's great. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time with a uh, review on the Marvels. No, I'm kidding. I'm not doing a review on that. That would be a waste of my time. Anyway, see ya.